hour and 45 minutes. So it's not going to be a, a massively long presentation. It's more talking about the new products and where we're going to. So um, if you don't know me, um, I'm Keith. <laughs> you may have seen on a couple of videos and stuff. So um, I'm not from South Africa, I'm from the UK, from Liverpool. And so first of all, thank you everyone for turning up. So, you know, normally every time when I, I do these, arrive everywhere. In <laughs> South Africa, you see my videos, it's always a rainy day, so I can't believe it. I just come down from, we actually we actually parked at the wrong hotel. So there's another rather than anybody else done it. We walked across. And it's one of the very first times of actually walking in South Africa without it actually raining. So let me introduce you to some of the team, because afterwards, um, we're going to give a chance to question and answer. The top row at the back are the, the geek quad, the squad, <laughs> the geek squad are there. Um, so you see the row, the, the back two rows. If you've got lots of technical questions, and one of the questions you're asking about the paralleling and why it doesn't have a common bus and stuff like that, uh, I'll answer some questions, but later on, if you've got very specific questions, they're the guys there. Right at the back is Joel. He is the app man. We're going, to do a, we're going to do a thing. He's the app man. So he's the guy responsible for the app and the portal. Um, David is um, the customer service for South Africa. He's the director. So David is the South African director. And we've obviously got a guy from Heralds, which is obviously to do the supply chain. Um, Phil is actually involved in a slightly different business, which is Sunsync Mobile, which will explain a bit more about what we're doing. So that's basically, uh, that's basically the, the team. You probably know, so Sunsync, we've been, we've been going part of global tech, and we've been going for about 25 years. So we're not a new company, but we've been based in Southeast Asia, in, in, in China. I'm not going to go too much about the history about us, but we operate in Hong Kong, China, Southern Africa, UK, Europe, as well as Australia, New Zealand. So we operate quite globally. Um, so a little bit, very little bit, I don't want to bore you all about it. So obviously, you're all here because the, the business is crazy, because of load shedding. Um, you know, when we first started selling the inverter or trying to sell the inverters in South Africa, load shedding wasn't such a big thing, but I'm seeing load shedding now. Uh, people telling me, you know, sort of stage one, now is generally is it stage seven. And I also got told, um, somebody said to me, well, maybe it's going to be worse, especially because of the EV vehicles. And they're talking about sort of maybe seven hours of electricity a day, never mind stage seven. I'm hearing it's going to get much, much worse, which is fantastic for you guys. It's brilliant. And listen, I appreciate your support for Sunsync. Really appreciate you supporting us. So we're going to try and do things and try and improve things and do things so better. You know, one of the things that we, we talk about in the UK, and I mentioned the UK, because UK doesn't do load shedding, not yet. Um, they have a different method of doing it. They just put the price up. And now in the UK, a kilowatt hour uh, for commercial will typically cost you 20, 30 rand a kilowatt hour in the UK. You see electricity bill for a commercial, that's what it costs. Uh, a home is much cheaper, but not that much cheaper. It's not like what you guys, it may be 20 rand or 15 rand a kilowatt hour. And so they do this way is because they think, well, rather than cut the power, they just put it up, put the price up, put the price up, people don't use it. And that's how they've done it in the UK. And so we've been very lucky because the market in the UK is similar to South Africa for a different reason, it's not through power cuts, it's just basically to reduce the cost of fuel because it is so crazy expensive and it's going up and, you know, going forward. You know, one of the things is somebody was telling me in the UK and they said to me, he said, oh, and I mentioned the UK a few things, but I'll move on to South Africa in a second. But they were talking about inverters and he said, oh, he said, I've got this new fantastic inverter, hybrid inverter, it's got 2.5 um, kilowatt MPPT and it's a 2.5 kilowatt uh, inverter, so it's a five kilowatt. <laughs> that was true, absolutely true, and that's what they were talking about. So, if you see any of my videos, um, recently I've been talking about sort of in the UK with the Mini Beast, um, and it'll bring me on to what we're going to do in South Africa. So, the Mini Beast is what we sold. It's it's a smaller inverter, it's a 3.6 um, kilowatt inverter with a 7 kilowatt MPPT dual MPPT, perfect for the UK market. Not here because the UK market doesn't have much sunshine. So you want to put as many solar panels as you can, but you don't need that much power because it's AC coupled and we're not using it as a UPS. So the inverter is relatively small. Joel was supposed to be down here to work the video, but uh, that was our mini beast. So we obviously work a lot with our IP rated battery and I'll explain a little bit more about that, but this is how it's matched in the UK at the moment. It's very popular. And um, we also supply this battery in South Africa. One of the benefits is it's IP, it's waterproof. 
Um, but also you can analyze every single cell. So you can go from the app and you can look at every cell on the unit. So anyway, we were talking about mini beast. Um, so today the presentation is just to talk about new product, where we're going, what's, what's happening from here. Um, one of the things that we're going to look, we've got lots of new products, lots of new developments. Um, and one of the products we, we're going to launch into South Africa and the UK, um, and we've been talking about it, is Mini Beats uh, South African Cousin, which is a 5.5 kilowatt inverter with a 10 kilowatt MPPT, 10,000 watts MPPT, with a 5.5. You know, there may be a market, there may be not a market, but certainly there, I, I believe there will be a market for it, um, rather than using, because a lot of the time, even here, you don't need such big power on, you know, if, you, if you're on load shedding, people try to conserve the power, and so therefore, you only, you're running your lights, your security system, your maybe an aircon unit, but you're not running, generally, most people don't run huge amounts because of the battery capacity. And so, therefore, we know the 5.5 is very popular here, it's really popular. Um, and so we're thinking, put a bigger MPPT, more panels, rather than buying a couple of inverters. So that's, that's how we're going forward. Um, and, I don't know if anybody actually watches, there's a, there's a TV channel, uh, an internet TV channel in the UK called eFix TV. I'm not sure if anybody actually watches it, but uh, it's really good. If you don't watch it, get find it. It's called eFix TV. Look at it. it they've got some great programs and, and they've been doing some stuff about solar. Um, a lot of the stuff they're doing is stuff I wouldn't touch because they're, they're on about the roofs and connecting solar panels and all the problems that you get. And, to do with that, and it's quite interesting. They've got some good, they've got some gurus on there, um, they've got about 400,000 subscribers. So it's something, I, I mentioned that because I think it's really good, and you know, we, we also get, we also get mentioned many, many times. And in fact, on, on there, they actually, uh, they actually talk about it. We're, we're the only inverter that fully complies out of the box. And the reason why, and you probably heard lots of things talking about the back, is, is down to, you know, people talking about earth bonding, earth bond relays. You probably say, well, we don't need earth bond relays. In some cases, you probably don't. You can probably put a permanent bond between neutral and earth. But certainly in the UK, you can't. And certainly in many applications here, you can't, especially when you've got upstream RCDs. Because if you put a permanent bond, it will trip an RCD, an upstream RCD that's feeding the inverter. You have to have the earth bond to go downstream. Because the reason for the earth bond is to change the classification of the inverter from a class two to a class one. And if you don't change it to a class one, it becomes dangerous. You've got fear of electrocution. None of your RCDs will give you any protection. And that's the main reason you have it. But it's to do with the classification of the inverter. You know, I, I can't comment completely on the regulations here, but I know it's very similar. And you know, if you do an installation and you try to connect a class two inverter, and there are a lot of class two inverters in South Africa, onto your house, as a UPS, and then suddenly you're in a class, what it should be a class one. You've got a risk of electrocution. And that is a big problem. And a lot of people don't realize that, and they don't realize the importance of an earth bond. But I know you guys, often in the, in the fuse board coming in, you've got permanent connection. So many, I've seen it. And so many of the fuses coming in, you've got a neutral earth bond. When I was, I, you know, I'm, I'm an electrical engineer, and I, I did an apprenticeship, and I remember when I was an apprentice, I saw consumer units and switch ports with, it, with them in the UK. Now it's, now it doesn't exist, it's, it's changed because of protection, whatever. But I, I've seen it, um, and I know it still exists a lot here, but I mentioned that about it. Anyway, um, you know, I talk about the reasons, and, and I'm sort of speaking to the, <laughs> the, you know, the main reasons you're using um, an inverter. Obviously, there's three reasons. I would say it's three reasons. is obviously people who are completely off-grid. There's a lot of people completely off-grid here. And that's a, benefit, that's a benefit of our inverter. And you probably think I'm doing a sales pitch, but I'm gonna go through lots of our, our, our new products. But one of the benefits of us is you don't have to buy a separate unit. You don't need a separate unit if you're off-grid. You can use the same unit for both off-grid or on-grid. Um, you, you, know, you, you know about paralleling. Obviously, in the UK, it's different because they, they're using AC coupled, and so they use a lot smaller inverter. And, and that's all about saving money. You know, you know, basically supplying the load. For your, you, know, you, you guys call it your, your non-essentials, and you obviously got your non-essentials, which is AC coupled. And then, of course, the most important reason here is UPS, uninterruptible power supplies. You know, if you're going to use a, an inverter, there is a changeover period. 
So if you're going to use an inverter, for example, on um, a, a, a something that's, that's sensitive to so the changeover, maybe a computer, or you might be doing some Bitcoin mining or a data center, um, <coughs> consider using two inverters or more and DC couple them. So one inverter is constantly supplying the load and the other inverter is charging the batteries. And therefore you never get changeover. And all the inverters will work that way. Again, we've got videos where we're using uh, a single phase coming in and we create a single phase charging the batteries and we've got three phase output DC coupled onto it. We did, we did one in a, a test site in uh, the Netherlands and it works beautiful. They've got a three phase heat pump, they've only got a single phase coming in, a bag of batteries, single phase coming in, trickle charging into the batteries, they can take fill the boots in three phase and it, work, it really works well. So, you know, let me continue. So we're talking about sort of uh, high energy systems, because that's what it's about, high energy. It's all about high energy systems, more power. Um, and I'm gonna, gonna go, go on to the uh, 16 kilowatt. So 16 kilowatt was the first one we launched. We launched that about a year ago. It's a brilliant, I don't know if any of you used it. The architecture is completely different. It's different to everything else we've, we've done, it's, uh, and it's great. We've got lots and lots of new models coming on the similar architecture. We've got great big connections. It's, it's really, it's not fiddly. It's really, really nice to use. Um, we've obviously got the 12 kilowatt, the three phase, but we've got other ones. So that, you know, if you've used our three phase, on grid, off grid, 50%, um, you, can, you, can, you can basically imbalance load. It's quite important. Because, you know, often people are using them, every, a lot of people have got three phase, but you've got one phase you may have the kitchen, the other phase there is the house, and one phase you've got your doorbell. You know, it's, it's like, you know, one phase is pretty useless, but you have to have three phases for it to work, because you need the phase rotation. So one of the phases is a waste of time. Whereas you look at our competitors, they'll do a three phase, and it's, you know, they do a 12 kilos, four, four, four. Well, it's pretty rubbish, because you might only want one, one of them one, one phase, or less than that. On grid, it's 100% imbalanced. So our, our unit can be 100% imbalanced. Off grid, you may take most of the power on phase one, or I should say L1, L2, or L3. So you might take most of the power, L1, L2, to supply most of the power, and L3 does nothing. So something to, to consider. On that particular one, that was a 15 kilowatt MPPT, and obviously the UPS. We've got some brand new ones coming, and the guys behind us, they've actually got new developments, and they told me to make sure we tell them the brand new one. We've got a 14 kilowatt. 14 kilowatt, three phase. We've got a 16 kilowatt, three phase. And, and these are low voltage, these are not high voltage, these are low voltage inverters. And we've got an 18 kilowatt, three phase with a 25 kilowatt MPPT. Wow. Massive MPPT. That one, I think, will do quite well. 18 kilowatt, three phase with a 25,000 watt MPPT. Uh, to me, it's, this will be available very soon. You know, it's coming, it's coming very soon. So the purpose, one of the things I wanted to do is talk today, was talk about where we're going, SunSync, that we're moving forward and when things are happening. And I think that's really important. You know, the only things, you know, the only things I ever see people, and I'm jumping a few little technical things, the only things that I ever see really is a major problem with our inverters, is people rate, they, 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 they do the solar array too low. So they often put the solar array, they've got like, a, if we say a 500 volt MPPT, and they put 200 volts on the solar array, and they put these massive panels at 200 volt, you can, adapt, you can damage the MPPT, and we've seen it, we've seen the MPPTs can burn. And that is a customer problem, not calculating correctly your minimum voltage. We know our, most of our inverters are say 500 volt, but you have to look at your minimum voltage, especially if you're using large, large um, panels. So that's really important. And the, obviously the other thing is bypass currents. How many times we see bypass relays welded together on the inverters? It, you know, I, I showed a video and said, look, here, please watch your current. And they pass all this current. And then basically they put, they put the whole house through the bypass, load shedding comes, boom, what happens? The inverter's gonna trip. As well as you can weld the bypass. So always consider that. You know, the, we also talking about you know the 16 kilowatt, which was the first one that we, we, we as I said, mentioned before. So I'm going to move a little bit further on. So uh, we've also got some new single phase coming out. So brand new single phase units, which will be cheaper. So I mentioned the 16 kilowatt, 
and we've got a 10 kilowatt and a 12 kilowatt single phase. Um, the architecture is different, so you've got the, they'll be massively cheaper because that's what it's about. It's about price as well, you know. And you guys, are, you, yeah, yeah. I know the market is fiercely competitive. It's crazy. I know the market is crazy, crazy at the moment. But you know, it will change. It's most important that we keep up with the technology, and I, I'll explain a little bit more about what we're, what we're doing at the moment. So, you know, high energy, high energy. I mentioned some of the smaller stuff. But high energy is it all about, you know, 50, we launched 50,000 watt inverter, 50 kilowatt high voltage. That is quite special. Now, I know a few of you guys have looked at it and started using it. But first of all, you know, I, I did a video recently in, in Hong Kong, in our Hong Kong office, and there should be training. You know, if you're going to use high voltage, for God's sake, be careful. Absolutely be careful. Make sure you've got the correct protection cover things. Use a, you might think, oh, it's very, you know, it's not a problem, no, no big deal. Just, it looks pretty harmless. You know, when you're talking 600, 700 volts, you get DC arc like that. And it's one of my other presentations I was showing you. You get a huge DC arc to create. You know, that voltage, if you get yourself across those, but that voltage, it will kill you. It will kill you. It's not like, you know, 440 volts will give you a nasty burn, you end up in A and E. You get across this on a DC, in the DC world, it's absolutely so dangerous. So we try to make things simple. We try to make things easier to use. One of the things is we try to avoid having common buzz bar. Because having the common buzz bar at high voltage can be very dangerous. It can be dangerous. You know, I talk about battery, a single battery spanner low, but a lot of people were looking at common buzz bars, but linking the various batteries together on a common buzz bar and putting the inverters on a common buzz bar. That can be absolutely so dangerous. So what we do, if you see what we have now, we have our battery pack, our high voltage battery pack, with this, I call it a BMS. Um, they call it something different now, there's new names for these things, but to me it's still a, it's still a battery, it's still a, um, a battery management system or whatever. And I haven't actually got, I don't know if we've got, uh, we've got a slide here. There we go. Okay. So it's, it's our battery pack, and at the top of it, it's got the battery management system. High voltage, 650 volts. It's nice and safe. One battery pack to one inverter. The inverters can take two. So on the inverter itself, it's got two channels. So you can put two battery packs on it. You can double it to four if you want to. But a nice, simple installation. It's so, so simple. You know, I, I wired one up in our, the one that my video I've shown in, in our Hong Kong office, I actually wired it up myself. The hardest part of it was putting the rack together. I didn't, <laughs> I got somebody else to do that. It took, it's a couple of guys, it took them hours to put the rack, a couple of hours to put the rack together. That's hard, but I'm not gonna do that, that's stupid. <laughs> I'm not gonna do that. But we put the rack together, we stopped the inverter, stopped the batteries into it, and just click, 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 cables onto it, on the battery management system. When you're doing it, when you're doing the connections, you know, use rubber gloves, proper approved, approved rubber gloves. Make sure, because part of what the training should be is how to handle safely high voltages and the safety that you require. Never, you know, you've got an you've got a MCB on there, but never disconnect on load. If you, it's an important point, you're in the training, don't disconnect on load. One of the things is we talk about paralleling on the unit I sh showed you in our Hong Kong. I, call, I called it our twin-headed monster. Two, two inverters and two batteries. You know, it is a monster, 100,000 watts set up, twin-headed monster, 120 kilowatts of batteries. And the only thing was, was a simple data cable that connected the two together. One data cable. Simple, it's AC connected. You're connecting on the AC side. You know, generally, if you're going to wire this type of thing, you're on the solar, we're better to balance your solar. So obviously, you put one solar on one, one on the other, and balance your solar system. But even if you haven't balanced it perfectly, and one of the batteries charges up greater than the other, the system will adjust itself automatically, and it will automatically bring the two batteries into sync. So you never have to worry about them going out of sync. It will always bring you back into sync. You've got no buzz bar. You don't need a buzz bar. You're just using one data cable. It's as simple as that. It's so simple to use. And that is the major, major benefit. I know there's some miscommunication at the beginning, um, but you know, and I apologize, but part of it is through the development stage, part of it is through the software, various things. 
but we're trying to make this thing simple because I believe the high energy products, the high voltage, the high energy, is what it's all gonna be about. Absolutely high energy. And you guys, if you've ever done this before, and you're thinking you've got these different jobs or whatever, marry it up with our, our, our battery pack. You know, the battery pack works perfect, and, and I'm not <coughs> knocking anybody's battery pack, I'm not knocking Freedom One or Solar MD, they're all good. You know, and, and what we encourage, we, we, we gave samples to Solar MD, we gave samples to Freedom One, but let them do their own testing, because I can't comment on how they do their, their BMS. You know, and they're also going through learning curves, they're all, everyone is. All I can say is, we have, our battery is, is not the cheapest, it, it's reasonably priced, it's not the, but it works. It plugs in and it works straight away, first time, no issues. Didn't even have to do an upgrade, it just worked. You know, on, on, on the 50 kilowatt, we've got, you know, if, if you're familiar with it, um, it's got 65,000 watt MPPT. It's got the auxiliary, it's got 180 amp bypass current. It's, it's a nice piece of kit. It's not expensive. And when you're doing all, if you're doing farms or you're doing buildings, because the future, this is going to go big. The high power, high energy is going to go huge. Because of EV vehicles, you know, all the supermarkets, all the offices, even where you're working, if you're going to plug in EV, you're going to plug in a number of EV chargers, you ain't got the energy, you haven't got the power, as, as Herald's called, the watts. You haven't got the watts to do it. They haven't got the power. So you use a storage system. If you go into the garage, you go to, to, to you fill your car up if you've got an EV vehicle. Because let's face it, in the next few years, there'll be no more gasoline vehicles. I think, I think the UK is about two years, they're banning. There'll be no gasoline vehicles available. You can't buy them. Um, you know, it's, it's changing, it's changing. And you guys have got, you know, you've got amazing opportunities. The same opportunities are in other countries, no doubt. Maybe greater here. But when you need to look at the high energy for offices and buildings, they will need that energy to charge EVs. You know, some people say we make battery char uh, car chargers. They say, oh, well, we've got this dynamic load balancing. You know, dynamic load balancing is like, if you, <laughs> you know, it is ridiculous. The way to describe dynamic load balancing is like going to the pub and you've got 10 rugby players and the, the landlord says, well, I've got one pint of beer, you can have a bit, you can have a bit, you can have a bit. What's the point? What's the point? You need to, everyone wants a pint. So you get a big vat of beer and everyone's happy. So that's important. You know, one of the things also about our, our 50 kilowatt is imbalance. It's taking imbalance loads, 40% imbalance. Um, so it, it's, it's, it's changing, the market is changing. So one of the things also, look on the inverse, it's got two channels. I mentioned before, two channels, two batteries. 100 amp each channel. So if you put one battery, if you're using a single battery, you must link the channels together. And then it's on the menu, you select the linked single battery. If you've got two batteries, select it. You know, if you're gonna put one of these systems in and you put it with the battery, it is a really, really nice piece of kit that's gonna serve for a long, long time. It looks beautiful. You've got your BMSs running on the battery, it's all lit up on the screens, you see what's going on. You've got your inverters, and this thing, is, this thing can store bucket loads of power. But every location where you think about, every office, Everywhere you're going to have EV, you're going to need energy. It's going to need more and more energy. You know, one of the things also to bear in mind, which I, I, I missed them. I, I, I thought, did, you know, I showed a video, and one of the first things I, I did is I set the charge currents and discharge currents. I'm a bit used to using the 48 volt. Suddenly forget, it's 12 times the wattage. I tripped the, I tripped the RCD in the office. <laughs> I tripped it twice and I realized, oh my God, it's the voltages, the power. I was, I was suddenly throwing 10,000 watts back into a, 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 a 20 amp RCD. And it was tripping, that was why I was tripping. When you're there, you, 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 you're setting your, your charge currents, your discharge currents, it's only a twelfth of what you've been for. You know, so that's something, you know, it might sound a total obvious thing, but I fell for it and it, it caused it to trip. Um, so just you know, start off low. If you're setting the system up, take your charge, discharge, put, put them on one amp. Yeah, <laughs> really low, or 10 amps, 600, yeah. Just keep it relatively low. You know, one amp is already 600 watts, and then bring it up. You know, it's a huge difference between the 48 volt. And I, and I also make sure, you know, even simple things, take care. Be very, very careful. What, what we don't want as a company is seeing people coming and they say, oh, they're engineers, there's just a pair of boots left there, and there's no engineer. It's, it's, you know, we've got to make sure to be careful. And I keep going on about it because, and this is one of the things we've been saying about 
we talk about sort of training and we're trying to encourage like the freedom one solar MD, other people to do training you know high voltage is not for everybody it's not a diy product my god <laughs> imagine can you imagine you're going to get some of these guys with fire you know, you know with this about power it's not a diy product it's just, um i haven't got a picture on here but it's a really, really nice piece of kit um, and it just slots into your rack and if you've got your batteries, you can slot it into your rack and you've got 100,000 watts. It can parallel. There's certain applications for this because it's going to be about power, more and more power, more and more storage. Because let's face it, you know, a lot of your customers will all have, all, you know, next couple of years, all the houses that everyone's going to want it to be done. But then the market's changing and the market's going to go vertical up. The money's going to go vertically up. It's going to get bigger and bigger money because that's where you, you know, that's where everyone's going to change. And we want to have the solution that works, not sort of having something they say, oh, it could work, it couldn't work. We, we, what we're doing is try testing every single piece of kit. You know, I, I'll do videos, I'll test it, I'll, I'll do it on live on, on, on a YouTube to prove it works. I know at the very beginning there are a couple of issues. You know, we, we, we started paralleling 10 inverters. I'm sure later it'll go bigger, but you took 10, 10, 100 kilowatt inverters, it's one megawatt. It's a one megawatt PCS. It's different because it's high frequency, super duper efficient. 98, 99% efficiencies, massive efficiencies. You're not running a low voltage transformer like ATUS. You know, ATUS are, you know, ATUS are like sort of, and I'm not knocking them because the technology is old and it's good. But when you're using a transformer, you're using a low-frequency transformer, your losses are big. I remember at college, and your losses are, are huge. And a good example, we were in, in Hong Kong, there's a there's company doing container batteries, and they're using low-frequency inverter. And they were about 500 kilowatt. And it was burning 7,000 watts, and they called it idling. We, I call it quiescent power. It was burning 7,000 watts and doing nothing. They had to run a generator to keep the inverter working. It's ridiculous, and that's the problem. When you go to high power, high power, low frequency on the batteries, because the other thing is, is, is you're gonna look at peak demands. It's not just all about UPS, it's all about peak demands. And I've never seen anything ridiculous. I've got, video, I've got videos, I've got pictures of it, where you can actually see you've got a generator running an inverter. What's the point? Now our, our system, we've got a comparable system, and you know, there's a seven kilowatt, and I said, well, that's about 400 watts. <laughs> and the guys were laughing, yeah, yeah, oh yeah, I don't believe you. It's, it's different because it's high frequency, like the old, we used to be using cold cathode tubes. Um, everyone changed to electronic transformers rather than using um, actual transformers because the efficiencies, they're so much better. And the other thing is obviously it's weight. It's, it's, it's the weight of it. So a SunSync, we're also, because of the new technology, um, we are also focusing a little bit on container batteries. Now, one thing that we're doing, we're doing with Herald, um, a container battery. We are probably the first company, I think, in the world to mass produce a container battery solution. And in fact, I know Herald will carry stock. Sure. Nobody else will carry stock of a container battery. It's a one megawatt. With, for, initially, it's one megawatt with 400 kilowatt inverter. Uh, UPS, any shopping centre, anywhere like that. It's a completely built unit. Inside, inside the unit, we've got. It's a the, the, the container is a DG goods container. It's been built properly. It's certificated. Every container, it's got its own certificate. It's a zone container. It can be used anywhere. We've got a fire system in there. You've got everything. You've got communications. You've got EMS. Everything is in there. It's plug and play. It's a plug and play container battery, a one megawatt plug and play. Because that's why I'm saying to you, it's more power. It's, it's the power, it's the energy, more watts. And because I think that's what, and, you, and, and whether you think, oh my God, it's not gonna be for us. I tell you, at some point, you're talking to a client and they say, well, we need some power. And you say, oh my God, I'm gonna build a container. I'm gonna buy a container, I'm gonna cut a hole in it, I'm gonna put this. I was just, it's done, it's got a HVAC system in it. It's got full monitoring in it. It's got everything in it. It's a finished solution. Um, I, I think within about four months, I think Heralds will actually have stock of this. So it's happening. And it is the first, and as far as I'm aware, in the world, it's a very, very first one in the world, a container 
purpose-built, mass-produced. Okay, we can, but I know at the moment our production capability is about 120 a month. We, we can produce 120. I'm sure the guys in China will push it up. We work with a company called, um, you see, Multibox. Multibox is a container expert. And this is a company that focused in making containers for oil rigs. Purpose-built containers, compartmentized inside, that you can load on a ship, fully assembled. So it's not buying another container and cutting it up or whatever. It's a purpose-built, certificated container. You can transport it. It's allowed, it'll have all certificates, the DG good rating. It can be transported anywhere. And that's what, we try, that's what we were trying to achieve. Um, going a bit forward, um, trying, trying to move my things. Okay, I'm going to talk about SunSync Connect app because this is all hosted on the SunSync Connect. We as a company are spending a fortune on SunSync Connect. It's important. It's very important to us because without SunSync Connect, we don't want to be just another company anywhere. You know, we're trying to sort of make something special. We, we host it. If, you, if you're looking now, we've got Region 1 and Region 2. Um, let me explain. The reason why Region 2 has come is because we're moving our servers and then we were doing the testing. Now Region 2 has already got a lot of users. Region 1 at the moment has got 189,000 inverters registered on it. It's about 350,000 users on Region 1. Region 1 will eventually migrate to Region 2. Region 1 is hosted on the Amazon, Amazon platform. Region 2 um, is hosted on Iona's platform, which is a German platform. We wanted to move it to the German platform, not to save money, because it's, it's about four times the cost, but it's secure. It's absolutely, they've got this German security. It's safe. Because let's face it, if the app went down, or the servers went down, and you, you, all your clients are, are, are expect because people are obsessed about the, looking at these things. They're crazy about them. Even myself, I've got a BB system in my house. I'm always looking at it. How much power I've saved, and so it's very, very important. If you, you know, the, the security of the app. You imagine you put a, a, a hundred or a thousand systems in, and and people say, oh, sometimes the app goes down. It doesn't really go. It doesn't go down. Sometimes it's to do with the internet lagging or various things. But we're actually improving, massively, massively improving the infrastructure. We will offer later on um, a Sunset Connect Pro. Uh, so sometimes questions asked. The Pro will give you almost real-time streaming. You know, people, I do see comments. People say, oh, yeah, well, I've got this little gadget. I can make this and whatever. I can do one. It's fine. You can do simple ones or ones and twos or 10 or 20 or 100 on an app. But you try putting hundreds of thousands onto an app, then the, the computer power is big. There's a lot of computers working together. I think we've got 12, is it 12, Joe? 15. 15, 15 servers, all interconnected. I'm not an IT guy, I'm an electrical engineer. I actually don't know how it works, but it's magic. I just know it works. And it's 15, so it's a whole labyrinth of these servers. You've got, I don't know, I'm not gonna go with it because I don't really understand it. Um, <laughs> So I mentioned before, it's hosted, it's hosted on the UK and German website, the IONIS website. So if, you, if you've got new ones coming, please look at using Region 2. Make sure Region 2 is important. Once we are running very smoothly, and we know it's running smoothly, we've had little problems because, you know, um, I, can, I can tell you, we, we, we developed this about, the Region 2 was developed six months ago. Um, and I've been pushing and pushing and pushing to get it running. And all I get comments off the IT guys, well, we're testing, we're still testing, we're still testing, we're still testing. And so it went very soft start and they put a few onto region two, checking, checking, checking. Now it's smooth, we know it's good. We will migrate later everything across. You don't guys don't have to, we, we will do it ourselves, we'll migrate it and it will move onto, onto the region two, which is a better, it's a faster computer. It's a faster, less, like, it's also closer, it's in London, you know, it's on the internet lines, it's a direct run. Before, on the, on the um, Amazon one, we were running from the Far East. Not in Hong, Kong, in Hong Kong, but it's an Amazon server. We want it all on a British or German server. I think that's really important. You know, we're doing a lot of integration. There's a lot of integration going on. We've integrated the app with Philips. I, I don't know if you saw a, a video. It works, it works now. If you've got a Philips Hue light bulb, and basically, um, you can connect a bulb and you can program it to work. And so when the batteries are full, 
it will like green. You choose the colour. If you want to like red when the battery is full, you can do it. But when the battery is full, it can like it can like green. And when the battery is discharging, you know, medium, it go orange, amber. Um, you guys would call it a robot light. If you want to call it a robot light, is that the right term? Okay, we call them traffic lights, but um, <laughs> but yeah, it's it, you can program this. But you know, not just a bulb. You can have sort of LED array around the inverter. Some guys, I see some of these things. People make them absolutely look really pretty works of art. And you can put LED, so a Philips control, anything to a Philips, it will work. You know, we're also adding, um, one of the features we will add soon is a perimeter alarm system. Mm. You know, I got told, perimeter alarm is important. We're developing it now. It's simple. We don't need any extra wires, and I'm not going to go through the technicality of it, but basically it's a small box that clips to one of the panels, and we're using the, the panel cable, the PV cable, as the method for transmit of moving the signal across. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's important. It's important. It's not just, yeah, I, 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 you know, I, I've got a friend who, um, you probably don't really know, Simon Moss. He, is is in uh, Port Elizabeth, and he's got he's got lot, he's got huge dogs on his ground. He's got a farm. Mm -hmm. I stayed there one night, and the empty half his solar array it disappeared overnight. He walked out, he with the dogs and everything. It went. So somebody said to me, he said, "This is very important. Having the protection, perimeter of protection, security is important." Other thing that we're doing, we've added on, um, which I didn't even know, but I got told by by Joel today. We've added on things like Alexia, and we and we will have the um, the, the the Apple one, the this this um, Google uh, Siri, Siri, yeah, that one as well. <laughs> <laughs> so you can say you can go to Alexia, how's your, how's my battery? What's the level of my battery? And Alexia go uh, something like your battery is fifty percent. It will talk to you. It will talk to you, and you'll do it with, with, with your app. Yeah, it's great. Show off. You know, you'd be able to talk to you, ask you, ask your phone what the level of your battery is, or in your car. It's important. I think these, these things, they're a little bit gimmicky, but I think they'd be good. Other thing that we're doing, other thing that we're doing, on the app, on the handheld app, we're putting, a, 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 we have our call centers, we have two call centers, but we're adding a chat line. Now, the chat line is more for your end customer. It's not for you guys, really. You guys will want to pick up the phone and talk to an engineer. But when you commission the system, and how many of your customers start having questions, well, how does it do this, and how do I change this, and whatever, we put, so you can tell, look at the app, we put a, a chat line, it's gonna be monitored 24 seven, 24 seven, fully by real people, it's not a robot, it's not a machine, there's real people, and it will be integrated into the app. So if your customer, the end customer has a question, when they go through the app, they've already gone through security because they've got the app. And so there's no need to go through security. The guys at the other end can access their information through the app and they can answer questions. They can't do a lot, they can't, certain things they can't do, but they can certainly give some basic advice. You know, if there's some problems maybe to do with other items, maybe other issues, that, that they can't help. They would, need to, they would need to refer it back. But they certainly give your customer answer questions. I think that's quite important. The chat line. We're, at, we're developing, um, you probably see the light bulb, light bulb at the back. Um, this is something we've been asked and asked. Um, smart switch. Smart switch. So basically, if you've got, we call it a smart load or use the auxiliary load or whatever, and you wanted to switch on your geezers if the battery is full, well, we can use a smart switch. Benefit of the smart switch is it's RF, it's wireless. Another benefit of the smart switch is you can use up to 10 of them at different battery levels if you want to. Different levels coming in. Another nice advantage is the, the fit single switch will probably, well, I, no, we will. We will include it free. You will get one free with the inverter. So coming later on in the year, when you buy the inverter, we'll include it for free. It's a free gift. And you think about where you want to wire into a geezer, it's got a T90 relay. T90 relay is a 30 amp relay. Uh, it's a big old beast, and it's perfect for switching on the geezers and stuff when your battery's a certain level. You can control it from the app. You control it, and there's lots of app switches, but this is particularly connected to the battery level. So if your battery's at 90%, you might want to switch on the geezer power. And it's particularly for that. And a lot of people complain to me about wiring it, and the wiring is an issue. 
And by using the wireless, the wireless switch, and it's a big piece, there's not a little light switch, we've shown on the light switch there, that's actually a unit. But this thing is designed to switch on a geezer or switch on whatever you want when the batteries are full so you're not wasting the energy. Or switch on your, you know, you, you, if you're rich enough, you switch on your swimming pool. <laughs> you, you know, I don't know if you guys haven't got one, but if you guys have got a pool, it switch on the pool. Um, the other thing we're going to do is, um, I don't know if you put the battery data logger. Uh, this is what, oh, you talk about the updates, is to manage the updates. I apologise. I do know. And you've probably seen the hand has mentioned about it is to do with the batteries. We're going to have the ability to most of the Sunsync batteries to have data logger directly on the battery. Um, the, the, and I'm going to give Hein credit because it was his idea initially. Um, he wants to do it, we sort of thought about it together. In, one of the first things about having the data logger on the battery is when you buy the battery, and it's in the warehouse or it's in your distributors, the batteries will be useless. You have to plug the data log in, even if you just do it once and you don't even use the data logger, you have to you have to activate the battery via data logger. And by activating the battery, you have to put certain information and you locate it. You know, um, I do see a lot of issues about thefts and things being stolen, especially inverters. And you know, people but people take them or whatever, and there's been a lot of pretty horrible cases. I've seen people on um, robbers going to people's houses, but the, the, generally from warehouses, I've seen a, a, a Heralds, a Siege in different places. When you take the inverter, and as soon as you connect it, we know instantly where it is because it comes up on the app. We see it, and we basically we're told we've got a number of inverters missing, and they can do the back end guys can look at it. And these things can be tracked. It can be switched off. We've had to. We don't offer that, but they track generally tracked. We want to have the same ability on a battery, um, but rather than tracking the battery, make it not worth somebody stealing it, because. If you steal it and it's disconnected, and if you even if you steal it out of the house and reconnect it, it'll track it. So it's a lot about tracking. It's a bit like you know your mobile phone. You got you got your phone, and you know if somebody steals a, a, a phone, Apple phone, it can be tracked. And I think this stuff is is so expensive, and I think it's very important. It, it is tracked. Um, one of the things is um, the other the other things, and there's a couple of, you have, I haven't told you if you've read is on the bottom end. But we're also giving better diagnostic tools. And if I show you onto, this is, this is actually the new portal. So it's nice. This is the new one. There's two things, there's the app and the portal. So I don't know if you use the portal, Sunsync, okay, use the portal. The portal is brilliant because it's a diagnostic tool. We're gonna add more and more. So this is which we're changing, we're giving it a little bit of a facelift. There's lots and lots of other things going in on the portal. So this will become, I don't know, Joel, when's the new portal going live? In about six weeks. Six weeks. So this is a new phase. The, it, you can check on the portal. You see T coil. It's always a problem. People putting them backwards. Uh, you've already seen it, right? The portal will show you, especially if you've got subcontractors working for you. You can do a tech, you can check it all over. You can check the system over from the portal. The app is nice. The app is nice because the app is really designed for the end user. The portal is designed for you guys, installers, and that's why the, import, the portal is important. If you go in our service centre, every bench, every engineer has got the portal open because as soon as they get bring an inverter, they put the inverter serial number straight to the portal, and it will give you the entire history about the inverter. We also got things like sort of um, audit trail. Now, if a customer changes something and they alter the setting, we can it, we can record it. Um, I was being, being a bit obsessive about uh, <laughs> obsessive about audit trail, and what I thought about is, you know, you, you're on an aeroplane, you got you got big Rolls Royce engines. Those engines are sent, is streaming that data back to the sensor. They know when it's going wrong. Our portal can stream data back, but it can see it for you, for you guys. You can opt to come off it completely. If the, if the householder doesn't want to stream it and just keep it to themselves, they can come out of it. Um, we've, we, you know, you, you can update, you can update everything. But going further on the development, we've got one brand new development that I think is a game changer. Um, you probably saw it on the thing. Um, we're trying to, we, we are, well, we're not trying to. We do, we're doing it. We're integrating with Escom. Yeah. And <laughs> we're doing an integration with Escom. And it will do you, if the load shedding comes, it will automatically make sure, you can preset the levels, but it will make sure your batteries are fully charged when load shedding is coming. Joel, when is the ESCOM integration ready? That's probably about eight weeks, that one. Well underway. Well underway with the ESCOM integration. 
because we, we, we've integrated in the UK with a number of utilities um, to do with different pricing, and then we, we said ESCOM's important. It's important that those batteries are full. And we've got to sell ourselves apart because, you know, you're asking what the differences are, competitors. This is important. This is very, very important that we have features like this to make our product the best product in the marketplace. Um, <laughs> so, you know, I don't know if you, if you, you know, I sort of show you, um, uh, go backwards. So when I was talking before about this, you know, this is, uh, this is our systems installed. Not all of them, because not everyone's got data logger. But if you look at some of these clusters, the other there around Joe Baker's clusters are 12,000, 15,000. And that's why the app is quite complicated, because the sheer number of the data coming back, that we'd be irresponsible if we didn't do it right. And so these servers and the money, is, is quite, it, it's, it goes into millions of, of US on the development. And we give it for free. And we're still going to give it for free. The only bit of which I did mention about is what we will do is offer the professional one. And the reason is because of the actual um, the, the data, because we get charged on data. So we, we don't own the server or we're using Ionis or whatever. We're, we're, not, we're, not, we're, not, we're not server. You know, these are server farms and these cost a fortune to run. We're not going into that business. It's not our business. But we, we, load, we, we, we rent space, we rent servers, we rent them out off the, off the provider. And you know, if you start putting a lot more data through it, it's, um, it's going to, one of the things we, I was thinking about, I don't know your thoughts, but you know, we, we're going to do the Sunsync um, Pro, Connect Pro. And we, we'll do it by a ticket item. So basically, if you guys wanted to set, you know, if, you, if you install a system, and you can say to your clients, we'll do a pro, we'll, we'll do a voucher thing, and you, you know, we'll give you guys a 50% discount, so you charge it at face value. It's not expensive, a few rand or whatever, a few dollars, not expensive, but you would get it half price, and so you say to your client, well, if, you, if you want to use that, or you might give it away. You say, okay, well, there's a, 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 it's not an expensive item, you've got a voucher, so if you want to go to the pro, use that voucher, and you can go to the sunset. The pro gives you real, one of the major benefits of the pro is the streaming, and that's probably the single biggest thing because we have um, a one minute refresh. It starts as default as five minutes and we can increase it to one minute. So that, that's, that's very important. Um, you know, the other thing is that we're doing is to help, um, I was gonna say questions at this point, but I'm not going to, because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna finish shortly and I'm gonna say, because the guys are here, because there's lots of different questions that people want and for to get the most out of your time, then it's better you can talk to the guys outside and for the different people and you can ask the various questions and you know, if, it's, if you want to beat up our director, then he's there. And he <laughs> 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 um, I know there are. I know there's been issues, but we're trying our best to solve it. But one of the things we're also trying to do is to give more information, make people understand things better. We're going to put a lot more information. We're going to put on our, on our, you know, we're going to put a lot of material on our website that you guys can download for free and put it on your own website. So if you're creating a website, you want pictures, files. We'll give you access to that. It's not to the public. You register, if you register through us, you can have access to material, documents, in word form that you can change yourselves. And you can customize it for your own, custom, your, own, your, your own businesses. You can change your logo, do whatever you like with it. But we're gonna give you that information, it's absolutely free. Um, we, you know, we, we, we have, you know, in, it, one of the things we always pride, you, you say you can't get through, but we have, how many, 12, how many engineers, 12? We've got 15 people, of which 12 are engineers in South Africa. You know, we're committed here. We look at our competitors. Um, what was our, you know, Solus or Grow Up? They got the commitment, we made the commitment. We're here. We're really, really committed to do this. And we, everywhere we operate, we commit. We're not sitting in the Far East. We're here with you guys. We're here, I'm talking to you guys, the CEO. We're totally touchable. And because we want to work together, it's important, you know, okay, I'm not the chairman, I'm the CEO, I'm the, I'm the, guy, I'm the guy with the mouth, you know, chief entertainment officer. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. You know, I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm an electrical engineer, and I'm also quite good at, you know, well, not very good, but I can, I can talk for saving life. So it's important. Real people. Whether you can get through or not get through, you call a call centre, you can talk to a real person, you're not on an app. You're not on a WeChat, WhatsApp, or whatever. You talk to somebody. Because there's nothing worse. If you're on a site and you've got a problem, you want to pick up that phone. Okay, sometimes things don't always go perfectly.
But generally, we, they do. Call through our call centre, because all our calls are logged. So you go through the call centre, they can do upgrades and certain things, and they will transfer the call, they log in. That's important, because later on, if there's a problem, those calls are logged, they're recorded, um, and they can go back to it, and they will call you back. Uh, they should do anyway, if they don't, you can put a complaint. We have a formal complaint procedure. If something's not right, you can make a formal complaint. We have our compliance is done there with the call centre. Our call centre is in North Africa. Um, you would say, well, why is it not in South Africa? Because it's the same call centre we serve for the UK. Um, but they're, they're, they're all they're either English, French, Spanish, whatever, different nationalities. But, we show, but it doesn't matter because it's a South African number. It's a local number. You dial there, it transfers there, they log the call. They will, they will always call you back. I try to give support by videos. You know, if you've seen any of my videos. <laughs> I try to do that. I try to make it interesting. I show real sites, real applications. There's so many, you know, I, I can say there's so many CEO of companies never even installed their own equipment. I'm a stupid one going to a wind farm or on a boat in Hong Kong or whatever. We test the gear, we check it in real. Because there's one thing when you test a piece of equipment and you're in a laboratory and it all works wonderful, but when you're in the real site, it's very different. I've been to plenty of sites in South Africa, you know, and in Libya, different places. You know, it's important. I can't do everything. But it's important that whatever we sell works. You don't want to be testing stuff on, on the site. You know, okay, sometimes a, we had a miscommunication on our 50 kilowatt, and, I, and that I apologize. It was a development, but as it happens, now we've got one hell of a product where you don't need common buzz bars, you've got less risk of electrocution, and you've got an amazing piece of kit. You know, if we, if you, we obviously have our forums, if you ever used our forum on our, on, on our, our, uh, our channel, our, our, our um, website, There's, we've had 80,000 posts altogether. 80,000. There's every question you can search. You can search here. If you want to ask something, somebody's answered something. There's a lot going on. You know, we're on Facebook. If you see some of the, you see some of the, the Facebook. One of the things that we, we we're going to do now is we got asked to do this, which we haven't. So we, you know, there's a Facebook account like users, installers. I think there's 30,000 people on it. We're, this month, we're going to add two engineers who will monitor the Facebook, LinkedIn, and social media on that part of the social media. <laughs> because it's important. Because we're finding it not being monitored. People got, and there's wrong answers going in. So we're having two dedicated people. All they're going to do, and they're English people, but they're just going to English. They're just going to monitor that side of it. We're not going to. One thing we're not going to do. We're not going to delete posts. We're not going to change things. You know, if people want to post whatever. But that's okay. But as long as they get the right information, if somebody asks a question, then it, we will pick it up. And I think that's important. And if you consider on the Facebook, you know, you can see you can get up to a thousand posts a week. You know, some of the Facebook, a thousand posts a week are going onto that. And that's one of the things why sort of data streams, WhatsApp, WeChat, they don't really work. So, you know, there's a lot, lot going on. It, you know, we're trying to give the right support. We're trying to give the creme to the creme, the best of the best support. And I'm sure you've got lots of questions and lots of things for a particular installation wasn't right. But the, we totally listen and that's why we're here we're listening we're trying to correct things you know the business has grown a lot um, for everybody you know not just us all you guys are probably seeing an amazing growth you, you, you ride it everybody is the whole industry is crazy and it's important now to make sure that you become last a long time the business you're going to be around for a long time and that's important to make sure the right support so you know one final thing, which I actually saw on social media, I'm going to close now. And somebody put this on the social media, and I thought it was a brilliant saying. Solar systems have replaced sports cars and expensive watches to regard of showing off. <laughs> it's so true. Anyway, guys, listen, thanks for listening. I hope I haven't bored you too much. Then Dave here is, if you want the service department, Dave. Phil is to do with the Sunsync Mobile, which is the contain, which is the container batteries. You've got the Geek Squad at the back there. If you've got lots of sort of technical, you want to ask about different things, they're there. But listen, thank you for your support. Thank you for listening to us. Hope you haven't bored you. You've got the Geek Squad at the back there. 
if you've got lots of sort of technical you want to ask about different things, they're there. But listen, thank you for your support. Thank you for listening to us. Hope I haven't bored you too much. Thank you. <laughs>